he didn't find that there was a whole lot of daylight between uh, our position and the nuclear talks and what's laid out in this letter. I'm telling you, most of us would have preferred a stronger agreement. How is, that a, how is that consistent with what the president's doing? Because they themselves have identified five principles that they think are important to including in a final deal, uh, and those principles are generally consistent with the principles that we have previously identified, too. They just don't understand what the administration's doing, I guess. I just tell them that, that they have uh, no reason to fear. Well, five former top advisors to President Obama in an open letter saying this, quote, We fear that the current negotiations with Iran, unless concluded along the lines outlined in this paper and buttressed by resolute regional strategy, may fall short of meeting the administration's own standard of a good agreement. The agreement in negotiation, Secretary Kerry leaving for Vienna the final week. We're back with the panel. Uh, Charles, this is an ominous sign. It is, and I think it's a real warning to the administration when five officials who worked for him on this, including David Petraeus, Dennis Ross, the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs under Obama, are saying in very polite and delicate words, mm -hmm. it will not meet the standards for a good agreement, which is a way of saying it's a bad agreement, and you promised us there'd be no agreement rather than a bad agreement. And when you hear Ernest say, well, yes, we agree on the five principles, the reason they are in a panic, the, the people who wrote this letter, is because Obama and Kerry have talked about the principles and have indicated they're ready to cross the red line. Two examples, Obama said, we're not terribly concerned about the lifting of the sanctions at the beginning. What we're really concerned about is about reimposing them afterwards which is a direct contradiction of the principle that you don't relieve the sanctions unless um, Iran has started to comply. So that's gone by the boards. Second was Iran has to come clean on past military actions. They've insisted that's a principle. Kerry says 10 days ago, well, you know, that's not really important because we have, quote, absolute certainty about Iran's nuclear reaction, which is complete hogwash. So they are already indicated they're ready to abandon these vaunted principles. Amy. Well, and the other person who's raising some alarm bells is Senator Corker from Tennessee. So it's beyond, there's obviously concern from outside the administration, former members of the administration, as well as Congress, also ratcheting up. Uh, concern. Look, this is a president and administration. They want to get this done. I mean, this has been uh, something that you can see every day. They suggesting that whatever it takes, we're going to get a deal done. Um, they're obviously not going to hit the June th 30th deadline, but I think that uh, you know a warning shot is probably the best way to. I mean, Dennis Ross that. told James Rosen today it's self fulfilling. At some point, they just want to get the deal yes, done, and then it that's becomes that like. the deal I, getting I, done. I, th I think that like. they were stung by this rebuke. And most respectfully, Josh Ernest's uh, efforts to find common grounds are, are ridiculous. But I'm going to make your day in a really bad way. Because just two weeks ago, the Supreme Court, under John Roberts, ruled in a different case, but involving this kind of an issue, unless it involves declaring war or spending money, Congress has no say in foreign affairs. It's up to the president. So what Barack Obama and John Kerry want they're going to get. Well, unless that the international cause, community yes. decides that they don't like it, that that's a cause different, quite different story. an uproar. Yes, it yes. will. And thank you for bringing it back to the Supreme Court. <laughs> Where we, we start and then we end. That's it for the.